school. Okay, so um, this was some initial work that I uh, started to extend last year. And uh, it's available on GitHub as an EXPath app package, so you can just download it. Some of the parts of this has been sponsored by the, the Swedish uh, Research Council, so gratitudes to them. And uh, just something about the project uh, that brought up this need for having graphing. Uh, so it's about uh, stage play and uh, bringing different disciplines together, so both researchers and practitioners. Uh, and uh, all the drama that is uh, encoded, I have had five students doing uh, this work. And uh, there has been also some semantic uh, coding. Uh, I will show you a bit. And uh, currently it's 1880 to 1900, so it's uh, old uh, stage plays. But uh, these have been played uh, all over Europe, actually, uh, especially around the turn of the last or the previous uh, century. Uh, so it could be that uh, some of them are, are familiar to you, at least. Uh, so one of the uh, semantic encodings were uh, about handicraft. Uh, so where does the graphing fit in then? Well, we do have some things that fit some relations. So we use the name parts uh, module of the TI, uh, list persons and list orgs, and uh, using uh, manually encoded list relations. So it can be both between uh, cast and non-cast persons. So cast persons are those who are actually on the stage saying something. And uh, non-cast are other persons just related to. Uh, and we have one requirement so that uh, the person should have at least one relation so that the graph is, is connected. Uh, and. Uh, we also have organizations. And uh, to differentiate between persons and organizations, the persons are elliptic and the uh, organizations are square uh, nodes. Uh, and to cast persons have solid outline and uh, non casts have dashed outline. So it's easy to see in the relations. Uh, and uh, we also follow the default uh, relation types, personal, social, and other. Uh, and they are in turn represented by dash, solid, and dotted edges, uh, respectively. So I will show you in a moment. Uh, also, sociograms. And these are not uh, manually encoded. These are deduced from from the actual uh, text. Uh, so it's displaying one view of uh, the interaction on stage. Uh, so these can be weighted and, uh, using the sort key attributes uh, on the relation element. So it's all according to the TI standard. Uh, and the good thing is that you can, of course, also use this to create other types of graphs based on dynamic data. I, it, it doesn't need to be uh, TI persons and uh, relations. It can be whatever that uh, can be expressed in uh, linking together some entities. I will show you a small example later on, and we've also been testing with other data. Uh, so now I should switch to the browser because uh, uh, the SVG is not very nice to, to LaTeX here. <laughs> so this is uh, a well-known uh, stage play, uh, The Father, by uh, August Strindberg. Uh, so maybe someone have heard of it. 
And should just get it back. It has switched the order of the screens. So here you can see one of the graphs. Oops. Once again. And according uh, to this, you can see that there seems to be one central person in this drama. So you can see almost everything is centered around uh, Adolf here. And uh, you also see that we have the different types. This is a non-cast person, the famous Odysseus. Uh, and you have cast persons, you have the different types of relations indicated by the types of edges. And uh, this is just an SVG generated directly uh, from this data. Uh, and if we then look at the sociogram, we can see another view of, of this. Uh, not making uh, Adolf that central, but rather we can see that it's his wife, Lara, that is uh, the central person in the, in the interaction. So um, in that way you can display different views on, 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 on the relations between uh, the cast persons and uh, also who they refer to and so on. A very common practice is to refer to other authors and their works, like having a dialogue with another author or just making them down, taking them, <laughs> stabbing them <laughs> to death and uh, cutting them to pieces, everything. And then uh, they get a reaction in another uh, play by, by that author. And uh, you can see different uh, interactions like this. Uh, so just to show you uh, that you can also do this uh, with other kinds of data. So for instance, this uh, uh, I just did uh, uh, relations for XSDB. So you can see we have uh, Excide here, uh, we have apps, we have all the XForms, uh, XQuery, XML, XSLFO, XUpdate, XML schema and so on. Uh, and the different uh, relations. And uh, one of the new features is that in this case we, for instance, have straight, uh, straight edges between them, but uh, this is easily configured. So if we just look at the configuration, if we get the mouse here, so this is an example. Uh, oh, yes. OK. So it's an easy configuration to, you can see we have the different types. Edge shape. So this is line. It's a straight line right now. So you can have bent lines and so on. Uh, currently, the layout is a spring layout. Uh, and this only works for, for the SVG, of course. I mean, if you uh, produce the graph ML or, or GEXF uh, format, there is no layout. You have to do that in whatever application you use uh, in that case. But uh, when you produce the SVG, you can definitely use any of the layouts. And uh, 
other settings like max iterations and so on to, to produce something. So if we just change uh, this to uh, circle instead, and then we should evaluate this. Okay, and then we go back to the graph. You can see we have changed the layout here uh, and produced a circle layout, and everything is lined up around like a circle. So uh, that's how easy it is to produce real graphs with the exist to be. Uh, just giving it uh, some suitable data. In this case, we can check. We have a few minutes left. So, so for instance, we can see there are, I used the uh, relations and persons. It's not persons now, but uh, that's one of the next steps to generalize it so that uh, you can call them nodes or, or edges instead. Uh, but since it's also called the TEI graphing app right now, it's well suitable. <laughs> so it's just to, to give them give the uh, nodes, and you have the relations making the edges. So you could just add or delete any of these, and then it would uh, change in the in, in the in, in the graph. Okay. And uh, since there also was one uh, user uh, who wanted to use the GEXF format, uh, I added that too. So in addition to the GraphML, which you can basically import in any visualization uh, tool, uh, you can also use the GEXF. Uh, and it's as easy uh, to configure that too, you just add output uh, value uh, GEXF uh, rather than SVG, which is the default right now. So just to show you the different layouts. So you can see we have the standard uh, for the circle layout. Uh, it's not that useful with the directed isocyclic, isocyclic graph, but uh, the ISOM layout is very nice, and the KK layout is also very nice if you want to test with something else. Uh, and you also saw the spring layout and the circle layout right now. So. And you can also have different, all of this is in the re readme uh, on, the, on GitHub, so you can easily find this information. Uh, and you also can decide if you want to have the labels inside or outside of, of, of the nodes and so on. So it's very easy to configure. Okay, that was that. Any questions? Adam? Yes. Yeah. And it's also available for both uh, 2.2 and, uh, and, uh, and the development branch so that you can. Uh, Is it written entirely in Xcode? Uh, no, it's in Java, uh, most of it. Okay. So it just, uh, I'm just using the API for it uh, to show you the, the examples. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, 
no, I mean it could be one part of the generalization so that you could uh, uh, just generally have the notion of uh, edges and, uh, and nodes. I mean that's the, the uh, thing that uh, is the easiest to just continue with since uh, using the Jung 2, two uh, library uh, together with Batik for the SVG and uh, the other uh, outputs are, are uh, I coded it according to the standard, so yeah. Uh, so it, yes, it could be. It could it definitely yeah. You could definitely feed it the schema, and you could see the relations between different uh, uh, modules or or or, or uh, between different elements and and, and so on. And uh, what kind of what's the size of the maximum graph you are able to generate and uh, see something because. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you can you can define you can define the size, but currently, uh, currently it checks the number of uh, nodes and just adjust uh, the size uh, in, in case uh, you don't give it a size uh, yourself. Define uh, height and width, uh, for instance, for the SVG. I mean, for for the other output formats, that's not uh, interesting. Uh, we've done tests with uh, up to half a million uh, nodes. Yeah. So uh, if you just give it enough memory, then it can definitely handle more. But that was the largest data set uh, uh, we had at hand right now. Yes? You, no, no, it's it's for use. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's on GitHub. Uh, it's a uh, free software license, of course. It's on the public repository. Yeah, but the problem is now with uh, the 2.2 and the development branch problem that we need to find out how to um, have the backwards compatibility uh, working because otherwise uh, we need to have diff two different uh, versions. But uh, yes, it's... Uh Any more questions? Okay, so uh, 